I was sure I heard a sound. And what's a little bit uncomfortable to admit here is I was sure that that sound was thwip. T-H-W-I-P. The same sound that Spider-Man's web shooters make. Good morning to you. And on that bizarre note, I'm Dayan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into hockey and or baseball, I also happen to offer daily shots of Penguins and Pirates. I was out in Latrobe yesterday, and I was right at the edge of the end zone where the Steelers were doing their seven shots drill. And it was the first team offense. No real surprises with any of the alignments. Dan Moore was the starting left tackle, if you want to get into that sort of thing. George Pickens was off to the right. And he was lined up against Patrick Peterson. This is the side of the end zone that I was on. So the ball is snapped. Kenny Pickett drops back. And he looks immediately to his right. No... Head fakes, pump fakes, no misdirection of any kind, just looks over to his right. And here comes Big George in my direction. And here comes Pat Pete completely in George's face. Not turning around to see the ball, nothing. He is just all over 14. There's nothing for George to do here. Kenny... Throws the ball anyway, which struck me as being, I'm going to be honest with you, in the moment, kind of stupid. There was no play there. What's more, Kenny didn't really put the ball up with much air or anything. It was a little low. And George is falling backward. So the play is DOA. Except for one thing. George was the target. So the ball comes, again, at a low trajectory and an honest trajectory, no real arc. And even as it's getting really close to George, and he's falling back, no balance, no feet on the ground, nothing, falling back, I hear that sound, that thwip. What was it? I believe, and again, you know, there's no replays for this sort of thing, but I believe that the ball hit Pat Pete's right forearm and changed, naturally, direction. So count everything that went wrong on this play, including, I might add, the perception of the quarterback's decision, and tell me how Pickens caught that ball and made it look like nothing. Fascinating reaction to this. The Chuck Knoll field stands are over toward the center of the complex. And there are a lot of fans that sit on the hillsides down by the far end zone. The only people on the St. Vincent College campus who roared, who freaked out when they saw this were the ones who were that close who could make out what happened how it was that george saw that pass coming his way how it was that he continued to focus on the ball as it was coming his way and how he caught the thing after the thwip i don't know how many people heard the thwip maybe green goblin or doc ock heard the thwip but it couldn't have been too many people But you could still sense, if you were down there or near there, that something really special had happened with that catch. Now, why am I sharing this with you? Because you know what George can do. Heck, you know what George has done in a lot of cases at this camp. And later on this same day, George blew the top off the defense and caught a 40-yarder from Kenny. Just went flying under it, which is one of those things that's going to make viral video or the highlights if somebody has good footage of it. But that's the kind of thing where people go, whoa, did you see that catch, George? This, 
This was the one that, to me, I was about to say it defines George. It does the opposite of that. It strips the definition off of George. When Mike Wallace was in Pittsburgh, you'll remember that Mike Tomlin used to tease him, and vocally so, including out in Latrobe as a one-trick pony. Yeah, but all you do is this. You just run. You blow the top off. They put it over top of you. You run under it, and it's a touchdown. What else can you do? And he was partially joking, but partially not, because Wallace did end up both in Pittsburgh and later in Baltimore, becoming a more complete wide receiver, to his credit. Wonderful career. Well, George, he's a... I I don't know that any of these things are tricks. He's a pony, he's young, but I don't know if he's got any number of tricks. All he does, and what makes him truly special, is that he finds a way to catch the football, even in the most obscene circumstances. This one might have been number one for me. This one might have been better than the acrobatics and the spilling, you know, over the top of a defender, the thing that he did against Joey Porter Jr. that caught all the attention earlier in camp. Because this one doesn't come with any sort of template. The other ones, I mean, you've seen stuff that looks kind of like that. You haven't seen this. You haven't seen a totally dead play become something out of thin air. This is a special young man, but do not dare label him. We don't know what he's going to be or what he's not going to be, but putting a ceiling on him is a big mistake. When we come back, J1Q. This segment of Daily Shot is brought to you by our good friends at Mike's Beer Bar. They're located on Federal Street, directly across from PNC Park. Mike has more than 500 beers on tap, including from more than 50 local breweries. Stop in and say hello. Tell Mike we sent you. Mike's Beer Bar. Today's J1Q comes from James. He says, DK, my reasonable expectation is to get deep into the playoffs in the 2025 season. We can get one playoff win this season. I would be happy. By the 2026 season, we should be looking for the seventh Super Bowl. My expectations are a little bit more long term. How about yours? You know, this is tough because, on one hand, yes, I can understand where you'd want to see the offense mature. You'd want to see the offense become battle tested, playoff tested before it takes the next big stride. But the other part of this and what's pulling at the other end of the rope is that you've got not one, not two, but three elite players on the other side of the ball. And one of them, Cam Hayward, believe it or not, isn't going to play forever. And TJ Watt isn't going to be DPOY material forever. Minka Fitzpatrick's kind of entering his prime, so you can count on that. But you have to manage your expectations, I feel, within a window that applies to the entire roster. The three best players on the Pittsburgh Steelers, as you and I are speaking this very second, are... Hayward, Watt, Fitzpatrick. We can debate about who's going to have the brighter future, who might even have the, the more productive season to come. I'm talking about right bleeping now. Those are your three best players. And if when that changes, it's not going to be very soon, which is a good thing for the defense and uh, you know the kind of thing that makes you hope that the offense can hurry the heck up now what's the best way to do that well to this extent uh, 
comfortable expressing optimism that the offense is going to be significantly better than it was in 2022. I don't think that's a very high bar to clear, certainly not for the passing game. I'd like to see the running game develop a little bit more explosiveness than it had, but I also wouldn't mind just seeing the running game kind of doing what it did over those final nine games, the 146.4 yard average. That's an average you can live with over the course of a 17-game season. But there needs to be more splash, and it needs to come from somewhere. It might be our man George. It might have to be our man George. But it's going to have to involve stepping on the gas, especially as it relates to Kenny and the wide receivers. Now, from there, you tell me how the Steelers overall are a better team in your eyes in the year 2026 than they would be in 2024 when those defensive guys I just mentioned would only be a year older? Yeah, I'm not sure I'm with you on this one, my man. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. I'm flying to Tampa tonight to cover the preseason game tomorrow night at Raymond James Stadium. We will have another show tomorrow. 